let's add some visual indicators to our game. Let's see what that means. We find ourselves back in Unity once more, and of course, visual indicators is a very broad statement and can mean a lot of things. But what I mean by that is basically adding a sword when we attack and also adding a visual indicator if someone took damage with a health script. That's basically the idea, at least in our context. So let's see how that's done. First of all, let's duplicate our scene and make a new scene called visual indicators. And we will also need a new sprite for this. This is going to be the sword sprite. Of course, once again by O Lobster, link is in the description below. And this is 16 per unit. We'll make this point and once again, no compression. And we will add this to the attack area of all things. So let's actually enable the attack area. And when we, we can add a sprite renderer component, there you go. And then we can take the sword in here and just drag it in there. What you will see is that the sword is above the player and the polygon collider is offset to the right. This is a bit of an issue. This is simply because what we've done is we have this offset here. So now what we want is basically we want an X offset of one and then a negative one offset here, right here. This is a fair enough estimation. It really only is important that you can see that, okay, there's actually something happening. I think that that's more important than it lining up perfectly. Worst case, you can always increase the size of the sword if you want to, but I think for our purposes in this case, this is going to be fine. So we can disable the attack area again, and then we will go into our health script. The first thing we'll do is actually, we will we'll re-enable the heal key here. And then what we will do is we will make a new method. This method is going to be a private I enumerator called visual indicator. And this will take in a color called color. First of all, what is an I enumerator? Broadly speaking, an I enumerator is a very useful thing that we can use in the mono behavior class that can basically start coroutines. Now a coroutine is something that runs more or less in parallel with the rest of the code. And what we'll use it for is we will get this sprite renderer component and we'll set the color to the color. And then what we'll do is we'll yield, return new, wait for seconds, let's say something like 0.15, and then we will reset the color back to color.white. Now the cool thing about the I enumerator is exactly this yield, return new, wait for seconds because this line is going to be executed. And then this particular method is going to wait 0.15 seconds while the rest of the code continues to execute. And then the next line will run. So that's the cool thing about coroutines. We're not going to go into too much detail right now. However, they can be really useful in some ways. Uh, for example, this one. So when we actually take damage, what we'll do is we'll call the start coroutine method. We'll pass in the visual indicator and then we'll pass in the color red here so that we see that this game object that has this health script attached to it has taken damage. And then we'll copy this over and we'll simply do the same thing for the heal and then make this a, for example, green. And in theory, that's actually all that we really need to get a nice short little indicator. So let's see if it worked. So first of all, I'm in game. And as you can see, I can now get the sword out and I have actually taken damage. And as you can see, we get this nice little red on the enemy for just a quick moment. So I can actually hit a lot of them at the same time as well. And that's pretty cool. So I have to keep running, otherwise we're gonna be swamped. And if I take the damage, as you can see, this also works. And if I press H, then as you can see, I get healed. Now the enemy gets healed as well because he has the same uh, health script attached to himself. However, that's not the worst thing. And as you can see, I can whittle him down very slowly over some time because we're only making three damage ah, and then he hit me. Well, that's sometimes how it goes. That's actually how easy it can be to add just a little bit of a visual indicator. And as you can see, if you take this side by side from what we've seen before versus this one, it is night and day how different it is and even how different it feels, right? Before we didn't get any feedback whatsoever what's happening, now we can actually see a sword appear in front of us, which roughly estimates the area that we're gonna make damage in. And then the other thing is that we can also see that actually the enemies are taking damage. So sometimes something like a red overlay in this case, or a uh, red color in the sprite is all that you really need 
to spice up the game just a little bit so that the player gets feedback. That's basically all that you want, that you want the player to get as much feedback as possible without overwhelming them, of course. There's also, of course, other things like adding an animation, which could also indicate some damage taken, or you can add some knockback so the goblins are thrown away. This also all works, which can get you a little bit of feedback, but in this case, this is totally fine, and actually a really easy and simple way to add some indicators into your game. Right, this was a quick one, but it was pretty good. And this would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would of course appreciate a like, and I will see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.